The broadcast of the Minneapolis Policy and Government Oversight Committee will now begin. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Bender. I'm the chair of the Policy and Government Oversight Committee, and I'm going to call to order our regular meeting for April 22nd, 2020. I'll note for the record that this meeting has remote participation from council members and city staff as authorized under the open Minnesota Open Meeting Law, Section 13D.021, due to the de declared state of local public health emergency. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Councilmember Reich? Here. Gordon? Here. Fletcher? Here. Cunningham? Present. Ellison? Present. Goodman? Present. Cano? Councilmember Cano? Schrader? Here. Johnson? Here. Palmasano? Present. Jenkins? Here. President Bender? Here. There are 11 council members present and one absent. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. The first order of business today is the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes those items that have been determined um, to be matters of routine business, but if any council members want to pull any items off for discussion, just let me know. There are 10 items on the consent agenda today, and I will be pulling item two. I'll note that below. So item one is a grant application to the Met Council's Livable Communities Demonstration Account for Towerside District Stormwater Phase Two project. Item two is a wage freeze for all jobs in the appointed, non-represented, and politically appointed employee groups. Item three is reports from the city ethics officer for state lobbying representation. Item four is authorization of a contract with Lockridge Grindle Nowen for federal lobbying representation from April 1st, 2020 through April through March 31st, 2021. Item five is approval of a, some provisions to the One Minneapolis Fund request for proposals. Item six is a resolution approving an increase in the appropriation and revenue for the Safe Routes to School program to address the addition of a signal system and match the final scope of the President's Bicycle Boulevard program. Item seven is authorization of a contract with Flowbird Urgent Urban Intelligence in the amount of $12, 12 million for five years to supply new parking meter pay stations and a support system for managing the equipment. Item eight is authorization of a contract with Kimberly Horn and Associates in the amount of $2.9 million for a term of five years for engineering and design services for the Hennepin Avenue reconstruction project. Item nine is acceptance of the low bid for Thomas and Sons construction in the amount of $316,000 to provide all material, labors and equipment and incidentals necessary for the Hennepin Avenue water main construction project. And item 10 is a resolution authorizing rollover funds from 2019 to 2020 for items that were delayed or not completed during the 2019 budget year for several operating departments. Uh, so I will go ahead and pull item two, which is related to the wage freeze, and we'll handle that separately. Uh, are there any other items that council members wish to pull off from today's consent agenda? I see Councilmember Gordon would like to speak on item two, so I'll hold that for later. Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, also President, but I also wanted to speak to item number two as well. Great, so is there any comment or discussion on the consent agenda? I'll go ahead and move the consent agenda. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I'm just curious if staff for item number seven uh, have details on how many different vendors uh, applied for the RFP or submitted bids. This is related to item seven, which is the um, parking meter authorization, which is the Public Works Department. Is there someone available to answer that question? I'm not hearing anyone uh, chime in. Um, 
Mr. Clerk, I have a little trouble seeing exactly who's on the call with all my other windows open. Um, do we know if there are any, is anyone from finance or, or public works available to answer a question on item seven? I do see council member Reich uh, in queue, council member Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I don't know the exact number, uh, but it was multiples, uh, maybe close to half a dozen uh, competed in this round of um, response to a proposal. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that, Council Member Reich. I, I was uh, interested in that because I know it's uh, a large, very visible, uh, impactful service for our residents, and I know that there are a lot of highly competitive uh, choices out there, and so was wondering how many uh, folks are participating in this. Thanks for the question, Council Member, and to Council Member Reich for um, following up. Uh, it looks like Mr. Intima um, could chime in with some detail that's in the RCA. I was also working to pull that up. Uh, Mr. Intermill? Uh, yeah, uh, Council President, in reviewing the RCA, uh, Public Works shared that um, there were three responses uh, to this RFP. Great. Thank you. I see Councilmember Gordon in queue. Well, I was also just going to share what I could learn from the uh, staff report. Um, so three responded and there were two finalists that were interviewed and evaluated. And there's more details on the staff report too for everybody. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion on any of the items on consent? I don't see any, so uh, with, without any further discussion, clerk, please call the roll on the agenda, the consent agenda. Council Member Reich? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Cano? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Palmasano? Aye. Jenkins? Aye. President Bender? Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and those nine items are adopted. That returns us to item two. And I believe this was um, the, uh, that Mr. Ruff, the city coordinator, was planning to begin on this item. So I'll turn it over to staff for that um, brief d description of this item. And I know, Mr. Carly, that you've also been very involved. So if the clerk's office has um, has things to start with or add, uh, please feel free. Um, President Bender, this is Mark Ruff. Uh, city coordinator, uh, the item in front of you is a, a wage freeze um, that would be effective April 29th uh, for three categories of employees. Uh, these are um, appointed employees, uh, so those who are typically department heads or division leaders within the uh, enterprise, the second being non-represented employee group, uh, and then uh, also the politically appointed employee group. So this wage freeze is proposed uh, through the end of 2021 and has been discussed, I think, previously at executive committee. And then that discussion did indicate um, in a question from Councilmember Johnson that we potentially could, if, if the economic situation improves, certainly could review um, this decision um, early in 2021 and, and make adjustments. Um, I think the majority of these particular uh, categories have seen a, a cost of living increase earlier in 2020. Um, and so this is affecting step increases through the remainder of 2021, I'm sorry, through the remainder of 2020 and then uh, cost of living and wage uh, steps through 2021. 
Thank you. And I'll note and then invite the clerk to chime in that, um, you know, I think at a high level, we're all still working together as a leadership team to understand and interpret the executive, I mean, the emergency declaration and the um, sort of decision making process that we are all using under that um, and which things need to come through council or should come through council. Uh, so I just appreciate everyone's work on that. I just want to assure everyone that any questions about that kind of process are just about how our government um, is is functioning as a structure and not about how well we're all working together as partners in this work and have appreciated the partnership of the mayor very much as well as all of the department heads who are helping lead us through this time. So this item does bring up some of those structural questions and I don't think they're all completely answered. Um, as of right now, I know council members may bring up some questions that will speak to some of those process pieces. So just wanted to note that and uh, Mr. Clerk, did you want to chime in? Because we did add here um, both uh, rather than just taking up the wage freeze, this resolution does include both the wage freeze and the hiring freeze. So approval of both of those pieces, as well as some um, details about the ex exemption process that staff could go through department heads if they would like to have an exemption from the hiring freeze, the wage freeze would not have an exception process as, as proposed. Uh, Madam President, thank you for that. The item before the committee, to be clear, that came out of the executive committee, went to council at its meeting last Friday and was referred to today's meeting, has only to do with the freeze on um, wages. The piece that occurred between that meeting and today's meeting was my office uh, noting that there was also a hiring freeze that was intended to be enacted and following previous practice from 2003-2008 in such matters, um, packaging those together as a resolution so that there was an ongoing effect to those desired actions initiated by the mayor which would uh, certainly apply during this local declared emergency, but have ongoing effect through the remainder of the year, certainly uh, a budgetary impact. And so modeling those prior actions had prepared a draft resolution that would not only accommodate or move forward the proposed freeze on wages, but would also incorporate the intended freeze on hiring. Uh, and work with HR to put those two together, uh, submitted that uh, as a possible substitute action for this so that the action before the committee and going forward to council with the recommendation would accommodate both the wage and hiring freezes. And as you noted, allowing a process for any uh, waiver exceptions to be granted to the hiring freeze for critical positions during that um, period of time. So that was an alternative, not part of the agenda and certainly not what was forwarded by the executive committee uh, to council and which was referred by council to today's meeting. But that explains the um, the alternative action that was discussed uh, with some council members, at least in in advance of today's meeting. So that would uh, explain why there is the alternative resolution that addresses both a wage and a hiring force. And maybe the attorney could also speak to that. And Mr. Carl, as you're describing this, I'm realizing that the substitute, of course, was not in limbs. And I'm 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 realizing I don't think it was sent to the whole city council. So I will apologize for that and go ahead and forward um, the resolution that the clerk's office put together to help us take a more official action on this item that that does include both a hiring freeze and a wage freeze approval of the city council. And as I'm doing that, I will go ahead and see if um, Mr. Nielsen wants to weigh in. And then I know that Councilmember Gordon and Council Vice President uh, wanted to speak on this item. And then a number of other council members are also in queue. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is Eric Nielsen, City Attorney's Office. Uh, Casey stated, I think, the process really well, like he always does. Um, you know, we will get to a point eventually uh, at an uncertain point when this emergency ends and the actions that are contemplated are uh, actions that have a much longer time frame, um, at least as initially thought, uh, extending to the end of this year, potentially, you know, and through 2021. 
Uh, and so in order to have those have lasting binding effect, uh, it does require counsel and promoter. And, uh, and so that's why they're being brought forward today. Great, thank you. And actually, Councilmember Gordon did send the resolution to everyone. So Councilmember Gordon, thank you for doing that. And I'll recognize you to speak uh, next. Thank you very much. And I um, appreciate all the work that went into bringing this forward. Um, when I saw that the hiring freeze was included in it, um, it caused me to think back to when we last did a hiring freeze when I was here. And I also had an opportunity to look back at some of the actions that were taken in 2003 as well as 2008 um, when we implemented this. And, and um, at the time back there, I thought that the process we had in place for waivers was was pretty opaque, wasn't that necessarily transparent. I think everybody was doing a great job and there were quarterly, I believe, updates that went to Ways and Means. I didn't necessarily serve on them, but that was a receive and file on Ways and Means. And as you, as you all know, sometimes those kinds of reports on some agendas are easy to get buried and there was no real opportunity for the council to weigh in on this. And I thought maybe um, now that we're considering it again, we could try to look at this in an effort to be more transparent, more accountable, and even more helpful as a council in making these difficult decisions about when to do a, a hiring freeze waiver. And um, just thinking about the processes, processes that we have in place now, uh, I thought following those made a lot of sense and this seemed like an appropriate thing. It's a personnel issue that it would go to the executive committee and the mayor of course serves on that as well and then it could come forward to the council. So the um, resolution that I um, amendment that I forwarded to the resolution would replace the uh, second paragraph after the now therefore be it resolved section um, about um, departments that are seeking exemptions from the hiring freeze and it would add this new paragraph that's very similar but incorporates a bit more process uh, including um, it going before the executive committee and maybe just for the public record I'll read that paragraph and as I'm reading it, I'll note that I'm comfortable moving this and passing it today. I think that makes a lot of sense, but if my colleagues want some more time, I'm also comfortable giving us until Friday when to move it again. And of course, we all know even if we passed it today, there's a chance to take another look at it on Friday. So here's the new paragraph. I'll just read it out loud for the record. That departments may seek an exemption to the hiring freeze for critical positions by submitting a request to a staff committee comprised of the city coordinator, chief human resources officer, and chief finance officer. The staff committee shall provide its findings and recommendations to the executive committee. The executive committee may concur in the staff committee's recommendations or submit its own report with recommendations for final determinations by the city council. And so that's laying out a new process. I think that will help us make sure that this is a little bit more transparent and we can be more accountable to each other. When I say transparent, I mean transparent to us and also transparent to different departments throughout the city, easy for them to track and understand the waiver process and how it works and also to the general public. I think that's, that's enough said for me now. I'm happy to take questions and listen to everybody else's comments. Thank you, Council Member Gordon. And maybe just to repeat and rephrase um, the resolution that he has sent around and described. Um, so for wage freezes, there would not be an exception process. The exceptions are listed explicitly in the resolution itself. For the hiring freeze, there would be an exception process. That would be the department heads first going to the staff team with an application process to hire staff um, and uh, regardless of the freeze being in place. And then if the department had didn't agree with that determination by the staff committee, they would essentially appeal it to the city council through the executive committee, which includes the mayor. And so the policy questions there are, should there be an exception process? And then what, what path should it follow and who should weigh in? Should it be just staff driven? Should it be policymakers? And then if so, which policymakers and what process? So um, just to outline some of the questions I know will be um, thinking about Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. Um, you know, I put myself in queue and um, I was really wanting to ask a question about item number one. However, I do support uh, Council Member Gordon's um, 
amendment and um, think that, you know, we do need to have a little more process around the um, the hiring exemptions. And so I, I think this would give us uh, a good opportunity to, to be able to have some oversight in that process. I'm also concerned about, you know, um, how we determine layoffs and, um, you know, cutting people's hours if that becomes a reality in the city. And so I want us to be thinking about what kinds of processes we can um, develop to be able to oversee and, and manage that work as well. Thank you. Um, Council member, or sorry, excuse me, uh, Mr. Ruff uh, indicated he uh, would like to speak. So please go ahead, Mr. Ruff. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council President. I think um, it's important to note, and especially I think we're greatly appreciative of staff of the Council meeting every week um, to be able to to discuss matters on a timely basis. Um, I think if Council is interested in a deeper dive into this discussion of, uh, of uh, hiring freeze, my recommendation would be not to take action this week, allow Human Resources Department to develop a full RCA, separate these issues and have options then and some conversations individually with those council members who have strong feelings about this. Um, I think the action the clerk had proposed was was something that was akin to what was done in 2008, um, where there was just a staff process and some notification. And you know, I understand council member Gordon's concerns with that, but I think we need to take those concerns and come back with a, a more robust discussion rather than uh, Necess unnecessarily combining these issues. So that would be at least a recommendation. And I think I speak on behalf of the of the human resources director in that recommendation as well. Thank you. Council Member Schrader. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I think it would be helpful also to know kind of what the current process is. Like if we've had uh, some of these exemptions or waivers for the hiring freeze go through, uh, be good to know kind of what's happening right now. If we're, especially if we're talking about kind of delaying, uh, it'd be good to know. Thank you, Mr. Ruff. Did you want to speak to that? I think um, a number of council members had questions about this because department heads had shared with them that they were waiting to hear back from the mayor's office about decisions about the current decisions about hiring and um, so it created a question similar to the one that council member Schrader just asked. Sure. Um, President Bender, council member Schrader, uh, the process right now is uh, there is a, an initial staff review of um, the requests for waivers from different departments and then that is forward that that initial staff review of coordinator uh, finance and uh, HR staff is sent then to the interim CFOs Lori Johnson to me as city coordinator and to Patience Ferguson as the chief human resources officer and we are um, then making a recommendation on that basis um, given the fact that we are in emergency declaration period which I think is the clerk and the city attorney mentioned um, this proposed resolution would go potentially beyond that period but given the fact that we are in the emergency declaration process we also then after the decision is made by the staff committee run that by the mayor's office um, to date I don't know that the mayor's office has differed from the staff changes but we do run that during this time okay thank you council member Cunningham Thank you, Madam President. I would like to um, follow up on Mr. Ruff's recommendation and I will uh, make a motion to delay this item until next week's council meeting um, pending further work on staff from staff on this on this issue. So 
So um, Councilmember Cunningham has moved to postpone the item. I think um, uh, I think perhaps the intention, and I want to speak for you, Councilmember, so chime in, um, is to postpone the hiring freeze portion, but perhaps still take action today on the wage freeze portion. Um, I'll note that we don't have um, we don't have a resolution prepared that, that only speaks to the wage freeze, but we could prepare that before Friday's council meeting. So um, I'll just offer that as a as a comment for now uh, for consideration in discussions about postponement. Uh, and I see uh, Councilor Cunningham, did you want to um, comment on that? And then I see Councilor Fletcher in queue as well. Yes, um, I. I appreciate the clarification. Um, I would say that um, I am okay with us uh, still moving forward with the with the wage freeze. Um, un unless anybody objects to that, I will take that as a friendly amendment to the to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, and, and we'll probably ask the clerk's office to help us manage the uh, specific not having our speaker management system uh, in, in place, but uh, Councilmember Fletcher. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I guess before we think about delaying, I'd be interested to know the status of these requests and how much action is likely to be taken during the course of a delay. I think that this actually is a really important uh, conversation for us to make sure that we have some voice in this. I think this has bigger budget implications than uh uh the procurement authority that we uh maybe intended to grant in an emergency declaration and I, I think it's important that uh that we not cede too much of this ground now if we're talking about a couple of positions if there's only been a couple of applications by departments and it's something that the mayor's office could informally talk to us about to get us through a week i'm fine delaying if that makes people more comfortable uh but i would be interested to know what scale of decision making is likely to be happening uh, in the next week if we are to delay a week. Thank you, Mr. Rupp. Do you have a sense of how many um, how many requests there are for hiring positions and the status of those requests? Mm -hmm. um, Council President, uh, you know, right now the these are just a few positions at a time. Um, there are some that are clearly um, issues that um, we could certainly wait in terms of if there was the ability to wait. Um, one of which I think about that the clerk can talk about is election judges. Um, and you know, that is one uh, that is a larger number um, at this stage is the only one that I can think of uh, that has actually gone through the staff committee process. And certainly if the clerk is willing to wait a week on that one we could certainly defer that but that's the only one that i'm aware of that has any significant impacts president is muted thank you council member I just wondered if you had any sense of the total number of FTEs or the total budget amount of of staff that had been okay to be hired or, or in process of consideration for approval. Again, um, if we had a full RCA process, we certainly could provide that information. I do not have the information given how quickly this has arisen on the council agenda. Thank you. I think, I mean, I just to state the obvious concern that Councilmember Fletcher raised that um, if, if delaying uh, one cycle means we have, you know, um, I think we're just trying to get a sense of how many FTEs might be approved, have been approved already, might be approved in the next week or so as we formalize this process. So I understand that total number isn't available today, but I think that's kind of the crux of the question that council members are asking. Uh, Councilmember Gordon is in queue. Oh, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Madam President, I'm sorry to jump in there late. If I heard the city coordinator mention that the elections office is one of the major ones, and certainly we submitted um, in bulk uh, as we prepare about 115 days or so before the August 11th uh, 
uh, primary and the special ward six election. So there are a number of them. I, I'm sorry, I don't have the total number on the top of my head or available. Um, that would obviously be a fairly substantial impact, both in terms of the operation of that election and the budget uh, impact. And I can certainly uh, submit that separately. We submitted those to the staff committee, so it's easy for me to go through my uh, email box and pull those out and share if that's what the council wishes. Thank you. Council Member Gordon. Thank you, um, and I appreciate that. And um, I'm, I guess, as I said earlier, I'm comfortable if we need another day to wait and look at this again on Friday. But hearing kind of all of this even makes me a little more concerned. It sounds like already the staff team is taking it to the mayor for review, and I think the best practices right now would be that they take it to the executive committee for review even now. And the mayor's on that, and at least then we can be made aware of this um, and that we can help provide uh, another set of eyes. I think um, I really appreciate that, of course, staff's going to say, could you give us more um, time to respond and address this because um, it wasn't necessarily their recommendation. I think it, it, the recommendation was to sit it in the coordinator's office. And even though it was three people who would review them, the two report to the coordinator. So that had one set of eyes that would look at it. And that's how um, I think it ended up being in the past and it wasn't very many sets of eyes and then we'd hear reports about it later. So they certainly um, in the past policies, it didn't necessarily even go to the mayor for review. Um, but I think if it's going to the mayor for review, of course, it should also go to council leadership. So at least we understand the extent of the problem. A little bit what happened in 08, I think, was we acted like we were really being budget hawks by putting in a freeze to hiring. And then we proceeded basically to any staff department that wanted to be able to get a waiver, they were getting the waivers. And it, after a while, we realized that we weren't even having much of a impact from the freeze either. So um, we should, I think, be serious about what kind of impact we have, and maybe some of us will want to influence it so that we are able to open it up more and others won't. I don't know, but um, I think um, if we want to get an RCA and look at it later in a few more weeks, we can also do that and fix it and, and change it. But at least now while we're looking at it, we could set the policy this week and make it clear and maybe even make it clear in the next few weeks that the council's interested and also hearing about these, having a chance to touch them and review them as they go forward. And with the executive committee and the council meeting weekly, I don't even think it's going to create much of a delay during this certain time period. Um, and then um, later, if things open up and we go back to our old structure, um, we could maybe deal with that then if the worry is it's going to take too long having it be referred from executive committee through the council. Those are just some of my initial thoughts and I would be Happy to speak with Mr. Ruff more about um, why I think this is so serious and why I think it's such a detriment to the city to cut the council completely out of the hiring waiver process. Thank you, Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. I'm to weigh in, um, but I understand where Council Member Gordon is coming from because last time around, there were many exceptions made and so and we didn't even know about it and uh, it kind of turned into who could lobby who through the staff process. My concern about this process is it puts us in a position of making personnel decisions, which I like even less. I, I what I the only thing worse than lobbying department heads is having department heads and staff lobby us about hiring someone. So I don't think that that uh, I think that that is a, a negative. The difference here and why I tend to agree with Council Member Gordon is in 08 and in 03, we did not have a state of emergency where the city council was not making any decisions for the most part. Um, those were emergencies that happened due to events, a loss in local government aid in one case and the recession in the other, where everyone was still collectively making decisions together. And so I think that there's a little bit more concern about um, the council not being involved and we say that there's a hiring freeze when there's really not. There are positions like the CFO that I would guess Mr. Ruff would want to hire immediately and uh, hopefully we would agree to do that. But as we put pressure on staff to do things, especially as they pertain to the emergency, 
we're going to have a situation where um, staff are going to feel pressured to perform and hiring more people in order to perform to our expectation is one way to do that. Uh, so I, I am a little bit of two minds on this. And I think that in the end, giving staff a little bit more time to come up with a process that uh, is is recognizing that we don't want to see a lot of waivers might be a, a compromise. And um, I, I'm I'm hesitant to take us out of the string and put staff in charge of waivers completely. But when I hear the city coordinator say he's concerned about this particular situation, I pay attention. And so um, I can see where Council Member Gordon was coming from. Without question, there was no transparency last time. And I don't think we want that kind of situation where there's no transparency. Again, we think we're doing something when in fact we're not, and it turns into lobbying us to hire a, you know, a, someone in the sanitation department or someone who, in the sidewalk department. I'm not really qualified to make that determination. So I, I, I support um, what Council Member Gordon's trying to do in spirit and maybe just with a little bit more time, uh, Mr. Ruff and Council Member Gordon can come to a place where our concerns about not, us not having any involvement can be addressed and um, everyone can be happy. That's kind of my point. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gordon. And I'll note that of this council and, and the mayor who's in office now, only three council members, Council Member Gordon, Goodman, and Reich, have been in office in a time when there was a past hiring freeze or a recession and the kind of budget um, trade offs that we will be facing in this budget as we look at our 2020 budget in with massively declining revenue as well as beyond to 2021 and, and 2022. So um, appreciate the perspective of the council members who have that institutional knowledge. Um, I see, okay, so I just want to. I wanted to note that Councilmember Palmasano uh, has um, in our in our chat uh, indicated a correction to what was stated verbally, which is that the executive committee actually both typically and in our virtual environment meets every other week, not weekly. Uh, and then I see Councilmember Fletcher in queue uh, to speak. Thank you, Council President. And uh, you know, I, I think uh, Council Members Gordon and Goodman. Uh, I think said some of the things that I want to say about how just I think it is important uh, that we be involved in the decision making process. But I think even more than that, this points to a general direction that we want to go and I'll and I'll support a delay of a week. I think, uh, um, it, you know, for us to work this out and think this through and, uh, you know, if the executive committee meeting every other week isn't often enough and we want to think about, uh, you know, in, in 08, the report was made to Ways and Means. So maybe we could make uh, Ways and Means the uh, the place that this comes through so that it meets regularly in the in the current structure. Um, but I think more than anything else, the the thing that I want to emphasize is is that under that we gave the mayor executive power and that that executive power uh, is the power to act in a formal way that the council has the opportunity uh, then to intervene in in, in the in, in the way the executive order is written. And so what's important to me, maybe more than whether we do it this week or next week, and maybe more than exactly, you know, which department it goes to and how that works, is that this get done in a formal way that we can all sign off on and that there's transparency about and that there's clarity uh, about how decisions are getting made so that we're not, you know, I think what concerns me more is the idea that there hasn't been something formal that's come through, that there was, uh, we were told verbally, uh, there was some email about uh, a hiring freeze uh, announcing it and then there's already a process in place and applications happening um, and uh, this is a great example for us to dig in on because I think we're all on the same page because I agree with the mayor's action so this is not a critique of the mayor at all this is more just staking out the space that I think there needs to be some amount of formal process uh, so that the council has the opportunity to do our jobs which are diminished but not meaningless uh in a state of emergency and so i think it's very important that we uh proceed in a sort of thoughtful intentional way uh to create enough public process that the public can understand uh what the mayor and the council are doing and so that the council has an opportunity uh to do our job as a part of uh this process which if we uh don't create enough process for us to be able to respond to uh we're not able to do uh, so that's my feedback on that. 
Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Schrader. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, wanted to highlight a lot of the points that Councilmember Fletcher um, just highlighted. I, I think it's just going to be critical uh, that we are making these decisions in a transparent and accountable way. Uh, I think the one additional point I'd like to make is that there, there is a difference between um, kind of the emergency as we were in about a, a month ago when we had to make very big decisions um, in a very short amount of time um, and where we're in now where we have a little bit more time. It's still a very compressed timeline. I don't want folks to think that you know we're not in a state of emergency, um, but it is something that we can in, incorporate more um, feedback and accountability with uh, the council. And so I think I want to make sure that we're not in a constant state of panic um, and it's in, um, instead really looking at what can happen. Uh, we still strive to be a city that's transparent and open and accountable. And I just want to make sure that we're keeping those ideals uh, front and center as front and center as we move forward. Thank you, Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. Um, much of what I wanted to, to say has already been said. Um, I was not an elected member of the council, but I was engaged in the, the council activities in 03 and 08. And um, yeah, the, the waivers were every other day, there was a, a, a new hire and, and people were just really confused about the process and how that was how that was was happening and and I I think in this situation given the budgetary impacts that um, that you know we as the council are are going to um, be held accountable for that we should at the minimum have um, awareness of of these exemptions and hires and and I certainly don't want to get into the position of determining which um, public works employee or applicant should be hired over um, another employee. That's absolutely the um, the hiring manager's uh, decision. But um, exemptions to our hiring freeze, I do think. In, in this particular time needs some council oversight. And yeah, if we can if we need to wait a week to to get it all worked out, I'm I'm comfortable with that as well. Thank you, council member. I put myself in queue to make a couple of comments. Um, I wanted to reflect that I, th I think just some themes that I heard and my own perspective. Um, I think uh, the question of which staff would would be exempted from the hiring freeze has implications that go beyond um, the the COVID pandemic and the very you know, sort of narrow specifics of that public health emergency because it has a impact on our overall budget. And I think we're in this transition time where we are, of course, still responding and will be for quite a while, I think, to the public health aspect of this emergency, but we're at what is likely the beginning of a very long financial impact to our economy and our own city budget as well. And so I think what I'm hearing from my colleagues and my own perspective is that we need to strike that balance of, you know, the authority to approve the city's budget still rests within the city council. And if, if we need to go back and clarify any of the regulations that have been put in place to ensure that that is clear, I I would like to do that because um, you know in, we don't know what it's going to be like in December when we're adopting our city's budget. But my expectation is that the city council will still approve the city's budget as is our purview under the city's charter. And so, you know, I think the line is a little bit gray exactly where each individual decision about whether or not to exempt a specific employee from a hiring decision a freeze um, decision or not is. Um, is affecting the whole budget, but I think what I hear my colleagues saying and what I'm interested in is making sure that the council is involved in helping set the direction for which priorities will be elevated, um, when, when and if we have to make difficult decisions about budget cuts, how the council's priorities are reflected, and, and we haven't started to have those conversations yet, um, really even with the council members who would likely be most involved, you know, Councilmember Fletcher and Palmasano I know are involved in some conversations, but 
um, but not at that level of detail at all yet. So we're moving very quickly as fast as we can to um, mitigate any of the budget impacts. And I know some of these decisions are very time sensitive, but others will impact our city potentially for years to come. And that's where I think we have to find that right balance of engaging the council in those long term policy decisions and those budget decisions that are in our purview, even under the state of emergency. So that's what I wanted to offer, and I just want to offer to all of you as well as my colleagues um, just to keep following up about some of these questions around our council process and structure and how it how it manages um, now under the emergency declaration. Um, and I really appreciate everyone's uh, just involvement in that and engagement in that. Is there any other comments on this item? I'll note that I think the clerk has recommended that we um, basically divide the question and um, then forward for uh, with uh, a recommendation to approve the uh, wage freeze portion on Friday at the city council meeting and then postpone the hiring freeze portion one cycle that would come back to this committee next Wednesday. So I will move that. Uh, I guess as a substitute to Councilor Cunningham's motion earlier um, and just clarify with the clerk that that's a proper motion and and that we're set to um, see if there's any final discussion. Great, uh, we have the green light from the clerk, so I'll just pause and see if any of my colleagues want to weigh in on this. Seeing none, please, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Connell? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Palmasano? Aye. Jenkins? Aye. President Bender? Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and that has those uh, items are adopted as moved. I believe that completes all of our items. Of course, I've closed all my windows now and I don't have my uh, <laughs> agenda in front of me. Um, so I believe that completes all of our items. I will, um, I'm hearing from the clerk that that is the end of our agenda. Thank you so much, everyone, for your participation today. Without objection, I will uh, adjourn our meeting. Thank you.